we're just a little city, but we're it's it's a really is a David and Goliath story on many levels. It involves protecting places that people care passionately about, particularly their neighborhoods. We've got an important battle going on here. We're trying to protect this community from what would be a devastating transportation project, a freeway coming through and basically gutting the whole community. Everything we could think of to do, every gimmick I could think of to do, we did. Everyone says South Pasadena is in the minority here. Uh, I think South Pasadena is probably where most Californians would line up on this issue. 710 Freeway was an example of an extreme use of state power, California, Caltrans, California Department of Transportation, using its power to ram through a project which would have devastating effect in a very important historic community. This project represented the largest number of historic resources that were going to be um, destroyed in any freeway project. When you take out the heart of a community with this physical intrusion of a freeway, uh, it's just, you can't just put that back together. It started in 1953 when the state legislature set the terminus of the 710 freeway uh, to end up in Pasadena and to uh, come up from Alhambra. The city's official position was for a westerly route. It was against the Meridian route, but it was for a westerly route, which was completely within the city limits on the western border of town. We did offer a route which was determined to be feasible. It could have been done for 90 million now instead of $8 billion. Caltrans denied that as the, the alternative and the fight was on starting in 1966. You go through the neighborhoods, you look at the communities, uh, Pasadena, South Pasadena, uh, El Sereno, and you say, um, these are living, working neighborhoods that you know people seem to uh, thrive in. And then you try and envision a freeway cutting right through the middle of that. When you look at the quality of those neighborhoods, can't you just stop and say, does the end justify the means? Civil engineers like to build things. There isn't a problem that they can't solve. They can send a man to the moon. So, and, and, and particularly the engineers at Caltrans, they build roads, they build freeways. There's just an inertia uh, about road building in Southern California that is really somewhat unique. Once a transportation project gets into the blood of the transportation uh, bureaucracy, it's very difficult to ever uh, kill it. At the time, the traffic projections were that after spending one and a half billion dollars, the traffic would go one mile an hour faster. It's an economic issue. Why spend that much money for that small amount of freeway when there are other needs in California and all over the country? It just doesn't make sense. We met and planned a coalition to bring people together to try to defeat this thing politically before we would have to go to the courtroom. And we had all these top-notch environmental historic preservation attorneys uh, on our team. First uh, attempt to uh, make the state comply with CEQA uh, as far as fuel routes are concerned. The will of the local people, in the case of South Pasadena, classic example of a group of local people who just wouldn't give up. You know, we had marches, we marched the route, we got television coverage. I said, well, what are you doing in terms of um, the Congress or in terms of making this, I and mean, this is a federal issue too, it's not just a state program because they get, they're getting state, the Caltrans is getting federal money. The crucial uh, alliance to me was with the National Trust for Historic Preservation. This is the biggest freeway battle the Trust has ever been involved with. The city of South Pasadena was placed on the 11 most endangered list in 1989 for the first time. We were on for five years. No other listing has ever been on that on our most endangered list for five solid years. New people come to town, they move from the west side, and they realize what we have here that's special. Some of those that don't know about the freeway and then they find out, they're horrified. And it's like, sign me up, what do I have to do to help you? The 710 freeway has really been kept alive by 
not statewide interest, not nationwide interest, but just very parochial and, in my view, selfish interests of surrounding cities. To me, it's just unfair for one community to want something that will help them that will then hurt another community. I personally couldn't do that. I remember going to Alhambra once and saying, don't sign the agreement, wait till we can negotiate ours because you're going to sign an agreement, run the traffic right up to our border. And the answer from one of their council members was, tough, we're going to choke you with traffic. You'll beg your transportation to complete the freeway. A lot of people thought, oh, little South Pasadena, you can't win against that big bureaucracy, Federal Highway Administration and Caltrans. They tried everything imaginable and they were thrown out of court every time. The federal lawsuit that ultimately resulted in an injunction against the project in July 1999. So that was very satisfying that not only was the road not gonna get built under those circumstances, but that the federal government had come around to the point of view that we had been right. In about 2003 and 2004, both the federal and state transportation agencies formally rescinded their approval of the project. Unfortunately, it's not just legal where you have to win, you have to win politically. Well, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger made his reputation as the Terminator. Here is a classic candidate for termination, the 710 freeway. The battle among the government agencies about the fate of this freeway was extraordinary. Nine years after the injunction was issued, and we still do not have a, an abandonment of this idea. So now the latest proposal is a tunnel. There are a lot of unintended, intended and unintended consequences of a tunnel. If you do the math, think about the fact that you'd be building a tunnel for two, three, four, five times more than the service freeway they were gonna build, and you'd still only get that one mile an hour faster. I think the taxpayers union, again, or these taxpayers for common sense wouldn't think that was a very common sense thing to do. I think it's a bait and switch, and I think those on our council that have allowed the tunnel study to go may lead to an argument later that, well, you knew you needed a freeway or you wouldn't have agreed to the study and it's infeasible and can't, too much money to put it through the tunnel, so we'll just put it back on the surface route. And, you know, we tried, but this is the best we can do. In the meantime, the state has been unwilling to let go of the properties it owns on the surface. It still owns hundreds and hundreds of homes in the right-of-way of the original freeway. They've continued to rent and be very poor stewards of these properties. Just how much more uh, do we invest in a technology, that is to say, a single occupancy vehicle travel, uh, even if we solve uh, the fuel and air pollution problem, uh, we're not going to solve the congestion problem. When I first got involved in 1988, I never would have dreamed that this battle would be going on for decades. So it's been one of the longest running battles of uh of uh, preservation uh, litigation history. I used to, believe it or not, be the younger generation in the freeway fight. Now I'm the older generation, but there's a younger generation coming up. Look at how this community came together on this issue. For those 20 years, uh, South Pasadena has continued to thrive. I think that's a pretty commendable community.